Hello Monsters, this is Fahad and I am back. Uh, so let's take a look at Biomarin, symbol B-M-R-N, Biomarin. Um, it, it has always been one of my favorite biotechs just because of incredible catalyst rich pipeline. There are 13 drugs in pipeline, especially 2016 this year is going to be an extremely catalyst rich calendar and one of those events is going to be taking place soon. So before I di dive into the fundamentals, first I want to show you exactly what's happening technically and in the option market. So here's the technical, here's the chart, right? So one thing on a larger scale I just want to mention is that today you're seeing a little bit of rotation because in the crude oil market because crude oil is bouncing and that's lifting the equities higher in the energy space and so biotech is essentially taking a break. Now remember biotech was an extremely beautiful outperformer. The sector overall was doing quite well for the last five to six days. But today you're, you're seeing, and in fact in the last couple of days you're seeing the biotech, you know, basically taking a seat back and the money is rotating back into energy sector. I think this little tiny weakness, this little tiny pullback as the biotech takes a break in the last couple of days is presenting exactly what I was looking for and I mentioned this in my chat room last week that if you see biotech take a small pullback or take a break it will present new buying opportunities in some of the catalyst richer stocks because I believe it's going to refresh and it's going to go higher again. So just to quickly show the chart, here is IBB. Um, let's see, you know, so here's the thing, a huge breakout in IBB last week, power breakout, and then a moderate pullback. I believe this pullback is presenting a buying opportunity. Same thing here in XBI. Fantastic high volume breakout, big breakout last week, and then a moderate pullback. I believe this little pullback that you have seen in the last couple of days, we're already positioned in DVAX, for example. Here's the same thing here, big breakout last week, and then a pullback, a low volume pullback. You're going to see a lot of charts that are setting up like this and technically in the biotech space, and I think many of them are presenting a buying opportunity. So now here's the case with Biomaran, same exact thing. Now what I'm going to do here is, first of all, I'm going to quickly draw a trend line to show you uh, that it's pulling back to a technical support right here. And uh, so right here, big, big green candle right here on very high volume, and then it started to break out big volume on this green candle and then low volume pullback onto the trend support. Now, what I'm looking for is that basically there's a big cat catalyst that's coming up next week, and I think the stock is going to pop on that catalyst. I'll discuss that in a moment, but technically speaking, I'm expecting stock to basically find bottom right around here, going to put a reversal candle, and I'm expecting the stock to go back towards $90 a level, which means it's going to form a beautiful cup and handle formation. So here cup and handle formation eventually I'm looking for a breakout from 88 to 89 dollar level and my first target is going to be see these volume over price resistance my first target is going to be right here at 94 dollars a share depending on what they say in this catalyst next week I think you could see this possibly take hot to go through 94 dollars level as well and go as high as to the next level of major resistance volume of a price resistance which is all the way up to 102 dollars a level to show you it differently technically let's go here here's the chart so you're gonna see this you know here's that here's that candle here's the the chart that I'm talking about this is the wedge formation you're gonna see this let me make this chart bigger so you can see I'm looking for a this low volume pullback and a move back towards nine eighty eight ninety dollars level depending on what they say in the catalyst next week I'm gonna expect this breakout and then all the way possibly all the way move back to in 94 first it's not very easily visible in the charts in the stock charts with the volume of a price resistance but 94 tar is my first target and the secondary target is all the way up to a hundred and two dollars a share now what they're the, what there's what I'm seeing in the option market is somebody is betting on that and they're making a pretty big bet so here is the option market by Marin now First thing what they did, there were two separate trades that went off, and both of them were pretty significant. The first trade happened at 10.07, where basically they bought a call ratio spread. See the volume, if you go to May, 
and you see the 85 strike calls there's 4,000 some volume here and then the 95 strike calls with 7,000 volume here the first trade the trader came out and they bought 1500 of the May 85 strike calls and they paid $5.60 for it and then they sold twice as many or 3000 of May 95 calls and they paid uh, two dollars or they collected two dollar fifteen cents credit for it so they paid fifth uh, they bought fifteen hundred of May 85 calls and they sold twice as many or three thousand contracts of May 95 calls and the whole spread the call ratio spread was done for about let's see the math comes out to be a dollar thirty so this is a ten dollar wide uh, call ratio spread and they paid a dollar thirty for it trying to keep the cost down as low as possible a second trader did a bullish risk reversal that happened about an hour and a half later at 11:52 a.m they came out and this time they went to july first they sold 2000 contracts of july 70 puts and they collected two dollars and 85 cents credit for it a very wide bid and ask spread here at the time of the trade it was 280 times four dollars so it was 280 bid and and four dollar asking price and they sold 2000 of these july 70 foot puts for 285 and they used the proceed to buy may 85 95 call spread they bought 2000 of may 85 95 call spreads and and they bought that particular call spread let me give you a quick math they bought that for uh, 5.8 minus 2.25 so they paid three dollars and 55 cents once again they sold 2000 of july 70 puts for 285 and they bought may 85 95 call spread 2000 times for 355 debit two separate traders came out about hour and a half apart from each other both are basically expressing a very bullish view suggesting the stock is gonna pop it's gonna go all the way potential to 95 or maybe even higher which again lines perfectly with my technical views here because if I see this thing break out through this through this uh, wedge that is forming the first volume of a price resistance will come into play right here around 9450 so it lines perfectly with what I'm seeing in the option market and if it breaks out through 95 9450 the next resistance is all the way up here at 102 now what's happening here we're fundamentally this is what's happening next week on April 20th, the company has a scheduled an R&D day, research and development R&D day. And remember, back in March, around middle of the March, Goldman Sachs took a very unusual turn on the stock and turned bullish. Goldman Sachs has been bearish on this, or mostly neutral, I should say, for a long, long time. Goldman Sachs upgraded the stock two notches, went from neutral all the way to conviction buy level. So the highest level that they can go. And you know what? I usually disregard a lot of the Goldman Sachs notes, especially when it comes to biotech, because they're not the best in my opinion. But when somebody puts out a conviction buy signal on a stock, it gets my interest. And so Goldman Sachs came out with a very bullish view. And now we have, here is, here is one of the notes. This came out on April 8th. So this came out on April 8th this was on Friday last week I showed this in the in my chat room I presented this entire table these are the upcoming non earnings events in the biotech sector in the next come in the next couple of weeks in the month of April one of those events is Biomarin and it discusses right there it's the analyst day on April 20th which is next week and they're going to be discussing actually it's not next week it's the following week my mistake April 20th is yeah it is next week it's Wednesday next week I'm closing on the house on April 22nd I should know this anyways April 20th next week is the Wednesday and this is what they're gonna be discussing they will be presenting the gene therapy in hemophilia a and uh, BMN 111 in the Ancodroplasia in other positive updates so we expect gene therapy BMN 270 data in hemophilia a uh, to provide an early read on efficacy and one year data on phase three dose. So, and how much is the straddle pricing? The straddle is currently pricing, May straddle is pricing 15.9% move in either direction. 
what is a straddle just to qu quickly show you if I go here here's the option change let's change this view to the uh, straddle right here here is May so stock is trading at 84.46 let's call it $85 is your add the money right here the add the money is uh, straddle 85 strike straddle is going for 1170 to 1310 take the midpoint call it about 1250 1250 divided by $84 a share the option market is expecting close to 15% move in the stock in the month of uh, in the month of May and with bunch of catalysts coming up and this will by the way will include earnings as well so and $15 first 15% move if it's to the upside you know it's gonna be pretty good for these calls that I'm recommending which is May 90 calls that I sent out an alert earlier another note I want to show so about this hemophilia a which will be discussed in the R&D event here is a note from March 29th from Leering and again I hunt for the kind of writing that gives me clues how it's going to shape up all right I'm not gonna talk about ratios and the financial ratios and whatnot this is the line that gets my attention all right according to Leering on March 28th management recent comments on the fourth quarter conference call suggests that the third dose level of BMN 270 which is the hemophilia a has generated sufficient sustainable F whatever v3 expression so a higher dose level may not be required that's what gets my attention in the fourth quarter conference call which was back in late January the management came out pretty confident about this this drug for hemophilia a BMN 270 and management clearly expressed that a higher dose level may not be required because of what they're seeing in the clinical studies Basically, if anybody was paying attention to what the management was trying to say in the fourth quarter conference call, they set an expectation already that they already have pretty good data in their hands for this hemophilia A. And this right here is the note from Leering that is telling us that. Nobody has this. Nobody is discussing this except this. Now, Biomarin, the, 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 the uh, uh, Leering has $120 price target with an outperform rating in the stock. We'll see if the stock can ever get to $120, maybe even go above that, depending on a lot of other things, including TMD franchise. But that's my clue right here, that um, the management was pretty confident in the fourth quarter earnings call, and I expect that means R&D day next, next week on April 20th is going to be pretty good another thing I will mention which is also not baked into catalyst at all is I need to find this where did it go there was a well it's I don't have it in front of open in front of me but I'm just gonna mention there was another note this time it came from this time it oh right here Credit Suisse um, here's another note uh, here's another note the Right. Lastly, we will learn about DMD in EU potential approval in May. We don't include DMD in our numbers and think most investors don't, which would suggest risk reward into May decision is positive. Now remember, keep in mind that DMD is the biggest elephant in the room when it comes to biomarin and, and there was some skittishness when the FD, FDA event that happened, um, you know, a couple months ago and it did not have a pretty good response in the, in the United States. But now biomarin is trying to accomplish the same thing in Europe and we're going to find out according to, city, according to Credit Suisse that how uh, the potential European Union approval in May for DMD. That's a huge catalyst, and right there is the, is, the, uh, is the analyst telling you we do not include DMD in the numbers and think most investors don't, which would suggest risk-reward in May decision is very positive. Now, I don't have a firm date for it. I was looking for it to see if I can find exact date when the e DMD approval from Europe will come through in May, and I don't have it, so I apologize for that. I can't find that piece of information. So, to boil, it all, boil this all down, here's basically what it comes down to. You have a stock that is setting up for a higher higher high starting from here I'm expecting a reversal candle today you have very bullish p positioning taking place with July 70 puts being sold and call ratio spread as well as call spreads being bought in May you have a you have R&D day which is coming on April 20th which is next week we're gonna talk about hemophilia you have a potential EU approval coming for DMD which is the elephant in the room it's gonna be sometime in May and you're gonna have earnings coming up on April 28th I should also mention one more thing about R&D before I close out the session um, 
there is another view and I'm not I didn't bring this over here this was discussed by yet another analyst but there's another view that this will be the first time in this R&D day where the analyst expects that this was from actually Bank of America where they believe the company will act, actually set out a clear target of reaching positive free cash flow within the next 12 months so this has to do not with the about the pipeline this has to do about the actual profitability of the company and Bank of America believes that the company in this by R&D day may clearly this time provide a clear timetable of when they will reach the free cash flow positive status financially and they expect it's going to happen in the next 12 months yet another catalyst that could potentially move the needle on the stock and send the forward earnings estimates higher and last thing I will tell you before I close this this Biomarin Insight and Sage. These are the three stocks that are uh, appearing non-stop in my research reports ever since Allergan and Pfizer basically deal fed up, fell apart that are now top M&A recommendations in all the entire analyst community. Biomarin Insight symbol INCY and there's one more stock which I haven't looked at previously it's called Sage. S-A-G-E is the symbol. So these three stocks are constantly appearing as top M&A candidates. The 13 billion dollar market cap for Biomarin is actually not expensive expensive to be honest with you given the huge franchise that they have so here's my view how would you play it just go buy straight may 90 calls don't need rocket scientists and rocket science around this just go buy straight may 90 calls and look for this to break out through 90 and possibly make a run as high as one or two that's it